Hello everyone, welcome to today's video. It's going to be my calorie deficit mistakes and things I wish I knew before losing weight. What to do versus what I did and how I learned from what I did. So let's go ahead and get into it. First, I want to talk about my background. I guess like the past year of dieting. So beginning of 2021, I lost about 10 pounds and I gained it all back within just a few weeks. And then I ended up doing like a reverse diet without even really knowing it. Bumped up my calories from like 18 or 1600 all the way up to 2650. Fast forward to October 18th of 2021, I started my first I guess official or real calorie deficit or cut I should say it was about 12 weeks It ended January 8th of 2022 and I lost 15 pounds But from my heaviest weight to my lowest weight it was 18 pounds And then I did a reverse diet which took about three weeks to bring my calories back from my calorie deficit to my maintenance But I have learned a lot from the whole entire process of my cut as well as my previous cuts I have 10 tips So let's just go ahead and jump into it because there's a lot to say about everything My first tip which is honestly like my biggest tip is to don't cut your calories too fast I cut my calories way too fast in my last cut and I'm actually really really like glad that I didn't gain all the way back. Cutting my calories too fast resulted in me being very very hungry because one day I was eating you know my normal amount that I was used to and then I cut my calories a lot and then the next day I'd be eating a lot less so then I'd have to cut out a huge meal or a bunch of snacks or just a bunch of food that wasn't necessarily necessary because I didn't need to be cutting that many calories that fast. Which kind of goes along with tip number two which is don't change your calories too often. I kept cutting my calories every single week. Every single week. What was I doing? Because I thought you know the faster the better. No. No, no, no. That was my biggest mistake. I kept cutting calories even though I was losing weight. I was losing like a pound to a pound and a half every single week while I was at a higher calories and when I was at lower calories. So I should have just stayed at my higher calories while losing the same weight. Don't cut your calories unless you're not losing weight or like barely losing weight. Cutting calories too often can make it very hard to stay satiated and full because when you keep cutting your calories, obviously you're going to be lower and lower and lower. So then you're going to have to cut out meals and snacks and everything like that. I now realize my calories did not need to be as low as I put them in order to lose weight. Like I was saying, I could have been losing weight on such higher calories versus when I was at lower calories. So number three is only using a scale for progress. No, I personally did use only the scale for progress because I'm very lazy and didn't want to take measurements because I don't have a body measuring tape so instead i would use like a piece of yarn with like a measuring tape if you know what i mean anyway using other methods to check your progress is so important there's so many other methods like i said one of them is measurements body fat your muscle mass how you feel how you look the way you're fitting into your clothes Ooh, and another big one is progress pictures progress pictures are your best friend because you see yourself every single day so you don't notice changes number four is focusing too much on the wrong things i was really focused on how many calories i was eating or intaking my workouts and like how i was burning calories or how many calories i was burning but what else is very important for weight loss is your stress your sleep quality how long you sleep not only how much you're eating but also what you're eating if you're full satiated if you're still hungry after meals or at the end of the day and feeling rested or stressed there's so much. Tip number five is not preparing your calories for the next day. So every single night before I go to bed or every single morning when I wake up, I like to plan out my like food for that day in the morning or the night before. Like I said, that way when it's morning time, I'm like, okay, I know I'm going to eat this. And then I also relatively know what time I'm going to eat it depending on how many meals I have for the day. That way I get all my calories in and I'm not like stressing over going over my calories or stressing being so far under my calories, having to eat things, things like that. Another thing that also happens helps is eating the same meals or the same foods every single day. So you know how many calories are in those meals or how many calories are in the foods you're eating. And then you can eat that every single day, which is basically what I do. Number six is trying to track all your macros. I didn't do this for this cut. I did it for, I don't know, I've done it here and there, but macros is just not something that I'm good with tracking, at least for now. Maybe it is in my future, maybe it's not. But at the time and still right now, I'm just not ready to track my macros. It's just too complicated for me. Because when I couldn't hit my macros exactly or perfectly, I would get so frustrated and I wouldn't know what to eat to hit my fat goal or to hit my protein goal or to hit my carb goal or how to hit those goals with eating my favorite foods. So instead what I did is I focused on my calorie goal as well as a protein goal. Number seven is only working out. I did this a few years ago. I had no idea that to lose weight you don't even have to work out. I feel like you guys know that if you're watching this video 
because it's calorie deficit mistakes. So to lose weight, obviously you only need to be in a calorie deficit, but working out is a tool that can help you burn calories, which therefore will put you further into a calorie deficit. So it definitely does help, but it's not the only thing that will make you lose weight. Number eight is something that I had a problem with a few years ago. It's under eating then overeating. This is so difficult because I guess society or social media always told me as a young girl that I had to eat 12,000 calories to lose weight. Not 12,000, 1,200 I mean. So I would eat those 1,200 calories or even 1,000 calories or even a little lower and I'd be so happy that I didn't hit my calorie goal because I went under it. I would be so happy that I was under my calories and now if, if I'm under my calories, I'll like eat a protein bar or eat like more food because I want to hit my calorie goal. But what I would do is I eat, like I said, about 1,000 to 1,200 calories every single day. And then at night, I'd be so like deprived of my favorite foods just because I wasn't satiated and I didn't feel complete without foods that I actually enjoyed. So then at night, I would overeat a ton. And all of those calories at night added up so fast and so quickly that obviously I was gaining weight because those calories at night would put me into a calorie surplus which is how I gained weight. Number nine is a tip that I see some people doing, I don't wanna say a lot, but some people doing, is eating back your calories that you burned. So what I mean by the calories you burned is the calories you burned during exercising. This is also a huge misconception that I had in my fitness journey, because what I do is I would eat my daily intake and then I'd see how many calories I burned during my workouts, and then I would eat those back as well, which would just put me in a calorie surplus because my daily intake was my maintenance or my TDEE, and then the calories that I burned during my workout would make me be eating more into a calorie surplus, which would actually make me gain weight. Number 10 is something that I used to do, which is trusting my Apple Watch or my iPhone or my Fitbit when it says how many calories I've burned during the day. But no device, Fitbit, Apple Watch, that new ring thing, or even your iPhone, none of them are completely accurate. Or even treadmills or like ellipticals or any cardio machines at your gym. None of them know your body. They don't know how many calories you're burning during the day. They can be totally under or totally over or still they can be around right. But you're never gonna know because they're not completely accurate. So don't base how many calories you're burning or how many calories you need to eat based on any machine like cardio machines or Apple Watch, iPhone, Fitbit, whatever it is. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I love you guys so much. I'll see you guys in next week's video. Bye, guys.